Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, trading uh, up 128. You got the Nasdaq up at uh, 293. S&Ps are up 42. It was a fast 20 points down. You got to love this market. Let's go to over now, man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, Mastering Probability. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You just... So you'll see Master Probability on the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You get Master Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months at $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. You can get it for a year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all, bottom line, come back with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. You can go check it out. You like it, right? You're going to get charged. You don't like it. For some reason, it doesn't work for you. You get your money back. Check it out. Great time to get a trading newsletter, folks. That's the bottom line. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Hey, did you get snow flurries up there in the Great White North of Tampa? Clear away, you know, on a Saturday? No, we didn't. <laughs> it, it just sounds like old man winters uh, attacked you a little bit. Oh, it, uh, it, it sounds like a little bit cold. Yeah, no, no, I know. I, I sound a lot worse than I am. That, that's the bottom line. I, uh, I'm, I'm good, but... Yeah. This is left over, I guess, so it yeah, is what it is, you know. Yeah, boy, was it cold here over the weekend. Oh, listen, we're little babies. When I was listening to you, you're like, cracking up when you're <laughs> saying it's 35 degrees, you know, which, it, it, by the way, folks, okay, where Steve is, is always about 10 degrees hotter than from where we are because he's lower in the south, you know. Yes. Tampa's here yeah. and Delray's down here on the, you know, so that was surprising, I know. What a, what a yeah. cold front, man. But that's it. It's 70 degrees out now, folks. <laughs> That's true. That's Come on true. down yeah. and visit us. Exactly, like exactly. So let's uh, pick up where we last left off, which was the seasonal perspective yes. for the Dow, which uh, typically tops and bottoms in the month of uh, January. So on average, the top comes in around January 6th, and the bottom comes in around January the 30th. So, folks, this is an 86-year cycle that we have out here. So we take a look at this year. The Dow actually topped on January 5th. That's when it made its high. And at this stage here, the month is over. We know how the markets are rallying right now. We can say that it bottomed on January 24th. Pretty cool how this uh, cycle has worked out. Now, what we look for, Tom, and everybody that's listening, what we look for is some type of pattern completion near these turn dates. So we don't just use those dates as definitive. And it doesn't have to be on that date. It just needs to be near that date. So we know that we're looking for some type of turn. So the, the top on January 5th was actually what we refer to as a TD nine count top. So perfect where we've got this blue arrow. If we look at the bottom, it turned out that it was a buy the D point. It was an A to B equals CD to the downside. Made us move to about the 2.618 level. And how I make a determination of when an A to B equals CD pattern completes is it needs to form some type of reversal candle. So in this case here, the market's moving lower. It needed to generate a bullish reversal candle. It did that last Monday, which was just a wild trading day. And at the end of the day, it generated a bullish hammer candle. So that was a confirmation of a, a bottom uh, for the uh, January 24th low. Now, this past Friday, uh, the Dow actually confirmed a second bottoming signal, and that's what I refer to as the Rhodes Mintum Indicator Bottom. That was confirmed with this bullish engulfing candle out there. Now, both these patterns, folks, the TD9 count, the Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal, I teach subscribers, they're in your archive work uh, shops. If, so, you know, if you want to try the newsletter for the next uh, 30 days out there, you'll be able to learn these patterns. So, today, and it looks like we're going to get it, although I'm not looking at the active market right now. A close above, it's what I refer to as the oscillator and change line. A, tol a close today above 34.816 is going to suggest that we should get a further rally. So it really ties into your opening segment of a counter trend move that is inside of the market. So to figure out where the Dow is headed to, what I like to do is then change over and take a look at the futures charts. And that's what the, here we're taking a look at a daily in the upper left, a weekly in the upper right. Uh, monthly in the lower left and a quarterly in the lower right. So as we take a look at the futures chart, and the, and the daily for the Dow is in the upper left-hand corner. The first target, because price is above a bullish structured profile, as long as price remains above 34,374, price then should go to the upper range, which is the top of that profile, which is up at 38,054. But before it gets there, Tom, there's this nice little trend line that is formed. So that becomes the next target to the upside. It's around the 35,500 level, and that is for the uh, Dow. So the next question should be, for folks that are looking at the seasonal cycle, is are the markets going to rally into the May time frame, or is this time different? And what I believe, the answer to that question, is this time may very well be different. And the reason is, or one of the reasons, is because we have a yearly, an annual 
teeny nine count top. And you and I, Tom, we talked about this probably four, five, six, seven weeks ago. Yes. As we were preparing for 2022. I, markets were rallying. I'm sure people were saying, what's this guy talking about? Yeah, there? you know, Steve, this one, folks, I'm telling you, listen, listen here, because this is this is going to be really cool, Steve, because of that yearly one. Yes. Because like even, you know, I mean, my take is that it's a counter trend bounce. But we all know that, hey, man, if this grabs a lot of strength, it could be something different. But that yearly True. TD nine is a big deal, man. Yeah, it, it, it is a big deal. Yeah. And, and that's why I say this really could be uh, different. And I want folks to remember it was the this daily TD nine count up on January 5th that helped us to identify the top out there. So therefore, I think we could be looking at a significant top. And that significant top, folks, if it really does take hold, and so far it has. So until it's proven otherwise, it has taken hold. And we could be looking for a move lower for the next two to three years out there. Now, many folks, Tom, this is what I always find is amazing. Many people, not you, uh, but many people, if you take a look at just the national media out there, they think that the move lower that took place last week was because the Fed is talking about raising interest rates. But that conclusion is factually incorrect if we take a look at the last two decades, the last 20 years out here. And here at the bottom of the chart is the Fed discount rate. And if we take a look at the Fed's funds rate out here, we can see back in 2003, it began moving higher. If we go and take a look at what the Dow did during that same time frame, it moved higher. We have an even more recent event than that, and that's 2016, when the uh, Fed began raising interest rates. What happened to the stock market? It also continued to move lower. lower. Uh, it also continued to move higher out there. So Fed, the Fed raising interest rates, folks, is not going to be the thing that croaks the market. So then what is it? If it's not interest rates that are going to cause the decline, then what is it that's going to cause that move lower? And one possible answer is war. Because stock markets, Tom, they do not like war. I mean, they just absolutely hate war. And what's nice about that is you and I, we can go back, take a look at stock charts, take a look at price behavior, and prove or disprove that theory. If we go back to June 25th, 1950, we look at the Korean War. North Korean Army, they cross the border on June 25th. The uh, Dow here continues to move lower. And it moves lower until... The market senses some type of feeling of positive optimism. In this case here was Task, Task Force Smith, uh, um, uh, which uh, uh, generated that optimism inside of the U.S. If we go and take a look at Pearl Harbor, as soon as we saw the attack, we can see that the Dow continued to move lower. And it was the Battle of the Coral Sea, May 7, 1942, that generated that feeling of optimism out here. If we take a look at the Persian Gulf War, we had several instances where there was a sense of a positive outcome, a positive resolution that led to the rebound. It was the final Operation Desert Storm that commenced on January 16, 1991 that put in that bottom. Here's Operation Iraqi Freedom, the same type of thing. Here's the Cuban Missile Crisis, the same type of thing out there. So, folks, it's all about optimism. And the key is that when wars or skirmishes begin, it's not until you get that sense of optimism in the U.S. that we see bottom. So, in summary, if you believe the U.S. is likely to be drawn into a war or a skirmish, then use the counter trend rally that Tom is talking about out here to adjust your portfolio. If you don't think there's any kind of war, then maybe the market moves higher to May. I don't think that's the situation. You're going to love it. Great rundown, Steve. Real easy to get his website, his newsletter, folks. Come over to TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters, Mastering Probability. Steve, have a great one, safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. You Thank too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.